What up, Nick Nation? It's your boy, Phil Porto, back with another episode of the good, the bad, and the ugly of yesterday's loss against the Los Angeles Lakers. So, let's jump right into the good. For me, it's crazy to say that our best player last night was Isaiah frickin' Hartenstein. Isaiah Hartenstein was our best player. If that doesn't make you have to, like, rethink some things about what we're doing here, I don't know what would. So, so we got to look at the fact that he was efficient. We got to look at the fact that he was not willing to back down from the challenges that were ahead of him, which were playing in the paint with, you know, an all-star in Anthony Davis. And he showed a lot of heart. Yes, I saw that horrible three-point attempt that he tried to make when we were down seven or so. And I wish I could delete that from my memory and never think about that again because that was awful. But I don't want to forget everything else that he did. So for me, the good outweighed the bad in that scenario. So I have to look at the fact that he put in the effort and he played with heart. And that's important to me. I always say that I do not expect perfection, but I do expect consistent effort. And that's what we saw from him. And so the consistent effort part is what leads me to my bad. The other day I had Julius Randle as my good. And I said that if we continue to see that kind of effort and that kind of play from him, that I would write an apology letter to him and to his family. Well, good news is that after yesterday's game, I can save my ink and I can save my stamps because that was not a good effort at all by Julius Randle. It was absolutely lackluster at best. He's out looking for the ball somewhere around the free throw line, not knowing that the pass was just given over his head to LeBron James, and LeBron is pretty much dunking it behind his back as he turns around to realize that that's where the ball is. Like, I do not know where his mind was. I do not know where his heart was last night, but neither of them were on the court last night in Madison Square Garden. He had four turnovers and no bully ball. Like when you see him play a lot of other teams, he'll have that bully ball game. He'll dunk it. He'll walk off flexing. He'll talk his trash. He'll give Jalen Brown a little bit of look here and there, a little smile. But against actual superstars like LeBron James and Anthony Davis, we saw none of that. And that is super disappointing. And then the last play in regulation time was absolutely embarrassing. Okay, so if you look at the post-game interview, Tibbs said that that play was drawn up to have three different options and that him and Brunson were in, in those scenarios and that they were supposed to read the defense and, and make the move. There was no reading of the defense at all. If you look, there was still 2.4 seconds on the clock in regulation and Julius Randle is holding the ball as he's getting double teamed and Brunson is wide open waiting for the opportunity. And of course, Julius Randle does not pass it. So that leads me to my ugly, Coach Tibbs. This man can never take responsibility for his inadequacies as a coach, and it is disgusting. In the post-game interview, he said there was three options on that play. Guess what? Julius Randle should not have been one of those options. Like, we have seen time and time again that he is not good in clutch situations. We have seen time and time again that he is not good when he gets double teamed. And of course they're going to double team if they're trying to send the game into overtime. He has never been someone that we can bank on down the stretch. And so the fact that that is part of your timeout and let's call a play scenario makes no sense to me. And matter of fact, he had the lowest shooting percentage of anybody on the team last night. So he should definitely have not been one of those three options. Matter of fact, there should have been three options. And it should have been the people that could actually dribble in that scenario and the people that were actually scoring and had high field goal percentages. So the three options should have been IQ, Brunson or Grimes. Julius Randle should have not been an option whatsoever. But of course, Coach Tibbs has to go with his favorite teacher's pet. The fact that you have Perkins, you have Stephen A. Smith, and so many other people calling you out on Twitter, asking why are you doing this time and time again? Why are you relying on Julius Randle as your clutch guy when he's not clutch? The fact that everybody else can see it but you, Tibbs, shows that you are the problem. Second, where was RJ? You want to sit him? That's fine. At least let people know why you made that decision. And maybe it was a good one. Maybe it was a bad one. None of us have any idea except to think this was probably another stupid decision by the coach. And then third, in the post-game interviews, you continue to say that our offense looked good, but our defense 
was lackluster. Defense wasn't good. The defense needs to be improved. You have to go back and watch the tape to figure out how to improve that defense. And this makes no sense to me. You are not an offensive coach whatsoever, yet we are continuing to thrive offensively, which shows that we are doing good on the offensive end in spite of your inefficiencies to coach an offense. And then, you're apparently the Yoda of defense, and yet where we're struggling is defense. So we're succeeding where you do not know what to do, and we are failing at what you're supposedly great at, which just continues to show that you are the issue. I do not understand why the Fire Tibbs chants are not ear piercing at the garden night in and night out. Get him out of here so we can actually have a future. Until next time, God bless.